Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Welcome back. And if you're new here, it's been exactly one year since I uploaded my very first sewing tutorial. When I uploaded that very first sewing tutorial, I had no idea that on February 14th of 2021, that my new granddaughter was going to be born into this world. Oh yeah, she's here and she is perfect. To commemorate my one year anniversary on YouTube and my new granddaughter, I'm going to make her the rope Easter basket. In that first video I uploaded to YouTube, it was the rope Easter basket. This one right here. Now it's cute all right, but I had no clue of what I was doing. If you want a good laugh, go ahead, click the link in the top right hand corner here and you can watch that video. I will also link that video at the end of this video. Today, I'm going to use 3 16 of an inch in diameter of rope, and it is made of cotton and poly. This brand, Hyper Tough, I got at Walmart, and I really do like the smaller diameter. I actually use that on this basket right here and this one. You can go for the bigger diameter of rope if you like, and this is one right here that I made. It's a lot more pliable and floppy. So if you like that more floppy feel on a basket, then go for that one. But if you like a sturdier, stronger edge like these two, then I would go with this. You are going to need some scrap fabric. Now I'm going to use Easter fabric because it's for an Easter basket. They did have some really cute little eggs and bunnies at Joanne Fabrics, and I did get some polka dots in the pastels. I bought a bundle of fat quarters at Walmart when I was there, and it was all this real pretty pastel tie dye. So I'm going to cut those up too. I have cut my strips into one inch in width and just random lengths, just like this. We are going to use a wide zigzag stitch on our basket today. And I do have some purple thread in here and I do have a jeans needle in my machine. You know what I'm gonna say next. Enough talking already. Let's get busy making my granddaughter's first Easter basket. One of the first things you're going to do is start rolling your rope into a ball so that it's very easy for you to unwind as we go. All I do is put it into a ball, stick it into one of these Dollar Tree plastic little bins. I'm going to just put that basket down in between where my foot pedal is and my other foot so that it comes up in between my legs, you know, easily and unwinds easily. What I did here was tape the end of my rope so that it doesn't unravel when I first start. The first thing you're going to do is just grab one of your strips of fabric and wrap it right around the tip of where that's taped. Kind of shove that in there. You just have to finagle it a little bit. Now I am going to leave the raw edge open on my basket because I just think it gives it just that shabby look. And I'm just going to, first of all, wrap it around like that. And I'm just going to stitch this fabric down onto the rope first before we start making our basket. You can use your straight stitch to get the fabric down first. That's what I'm going to do before I go to the zigzag. And I'm gonna do a couple stitches with my hand wheel. Until it catches underneath my feed dogs. So that's what you have so far. And it's just tacking it down there for us. There is a little spot there I left open, so I'm gonna go ahead and curl that part into my basket. So this is what you're gonna do. Take the tip of that, kind of squish it down in, and you're going to sort of coil it at first. And this part you really want to get tight. Hope you can see this. I'm just holding it, coiling it like a snail. You don't want any gaps in between these coils. And you see that little piece right there? That's okay that that's up. We can cut all that off later because it's actually just 
frayed material anyways, and, and I, I like that look, so I'm okay with that. There's our very beginning. So we coiled once and twice, and then I'm going to stick that with a pin like that. And then I'm also going to come from the other way. I'm just going to use my hand wheel to get down into that very first piece of rope. And just walk yourself through this very first part with the straight stitch is what I'm using. Pull out that other pin. Now I think I'm safe to go ahead and use my foot pedal. Just be nice and easy and slow with it. So this is so far what I have, and you're going to want to go across the other way. Again, you're just going to go forward and then go ahead and hit the reverse again. And that's okay that that flipped up because remember mine is really super scrappy. I'm going to put another straight stitch across in a different position where there are no stitches before I start the actual sewing of the basket. Now I think we're gonna go ahead and put our zigzag stitch on. The one thing you wanna remember when you start your rope basket I'm right-handed. The tail is going to be feeding through my machine counterclockwise. If you do it the other way, things are not going to end well. The bulk of your basket needs to be on this side of your machine. If you do it this way with the left side being coiled through like that, it's going to end up over here. So we want the bulk of our basket to be out here. So I'm going to flip it so that my tail is on my tail is on the right hand side. See, it's coming out this way. Now I'm going to actually start my zigzag right in here and kind of re-go around those stitches just to make sure that everything is nice and secure. See, it's on the zigzag. Lift up. The first part is the trickiest. After this very first part, it is smooth sailing. So just be patient and you will get it. Right now we're just kind of reinforcing ropes just so that these are all connected in here when where the beginning is. And you'll have this like out here and that's okay because we'll refix that. Right now I have too big of a zigzag. I'm almost positive. I'm gonna take my zigzag down to a three right now and see how that works. This is what I have so far. Just a bunch of zigzags. Now we're gonna get out here and we're going to do this part. And then that should help us to get going and we should be able to keep going from that point with our zigzag and not have to lift up. But remember, you are gonna have to turn. Lift and turn to get it around those first few curves. inner pieces for right now. Now I'm going to get right in here and I'm going to start to connect these right here. These baskets are always the hardest to get started on, but trust me, it will be smooth sailing after this. So there, I think I have it pretty well together. 
but probably what I am going to do is start back over here and then kind of reinforce that and then we'll be on our way. You want your little circle of rope to be on this side of your sewing foot, your left side. Right now I'm just keeping that notch right in between the two ropes and I'm just pulling it along here. Now you need a really big flat surface to do these rope baskets as well, I forgot to say. You never want to pull on this when you're first making the bottom part of your basket. You want it just to come in snug, just enough taut so that it stays nicely flat together. Otherwise, you're going to prematurely put a bend in your basket and you don't want that. You want a nice full basket. So here we go. I'm starting to get a nice flow, which is good. Let me just show you what I have so far. That back looks kind of crazy, but that's all right. That's the bottom. <laughs> this is going to be the, what everybody sees. So now I'm going to just go ahead and connect these. And you're just going to nicely, like, not really pull, but just gently sort of pull, but not really, just so that it butts up against there so that everything, so you're gonna feed it through so that everything stays nice and flat. Because if you pulled it, this is what would happen. It would start to come up and do your bowl and you don't want that yet. We do want that, but not yet. Once you get going, it starts to get a little bit more even for you because you'll have way more control over it. Even on the back, it looks better right there. This right here is where you can also pick your next fabric piece. And what we're going to do is just kind of roll it around there like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because remember, it's a scrappy Easter basket or shabby chic, like I said in my first tutorial, which was totally funny, but okay. And then you're just going to go ahead and continue. Meeting those two ropes up, imagining the rope underneath your fabric there. And you can see where it starts and ends. It's not anything that you won't be able to see. And then it's just keep wrapping it, you know, depending on how long your piece of fabric is. And you can add your fabric anytime you feel like artistically you need another piece of fabric. See that? And then it just comes around and you know, that's it. Now, if you wanted to at this point, you could actually make it this size right here. We're at roughly Edge to edge, maybe three and a half inches we're at right there. And we're gonna go a little bit bigger because it's an Easter basket and I want it to be just a little bit bigger. You're just going to keep going around and around. Check your work, make sure that everything is staying together because it's much easier to fix a gap now if you accidentally get a gap in between the ropes than after you have the sides all up, so.
just wrap it around there and we can also trim off any if some get stuck out we can also trim them up as you know after we're done it's not a big deal check your bobbin often too because it, this one runs out of bobbin quick because you're using a lot of thread Okay, so I see here, right along here, there's a gap. And then I see one right here too, as I'm assessing everything. So I will go back over that right now and fix that. Almost five and three quarters. This is where I want to put the bend in my basket. What you're going to do first is just ever so gently, you're going to lift this up. Just your fingers with whatever just shove it in there just wedge it in there with this right hand where you're feeding it through that's coming up from the ball you're going to tug ever so gently a little bit more than what you did to do the flat surface you're going to keep the wedge and you're going to start to pull just a little bit pull and push it through at the same time it's like a tug of war Just a little bit extra pull is all you need. Oh, we need some fabric. I got busy with all that and didn't even think about putting fabric on. You're doing a couple things at one time. You're pulling, you're pushing, and you're wedging. So, And even if you don't get the fabric on there perfect, don't worry about it because it's going to fray and that's the look we're going for. Even if you get it doubled on itself or it turns back to the back fabric or to the wrong side of the fabric, I mean, it's, it's no big deal, trust me. Now I've lost count of how many times I went around this basket. So I am going to go ahead and even lift it up more. So you're still pulling, you're gonna lift it up even higher. So now I am at about about seven and a quarter inches in diameter. But now I want you to notice this. You see how it's turning into a bowl just simply by bending that up. The sharper you bend it, the more of this bottom curve, the sharper that will be. The more gradual, obviously, then the less curved. Oh, we definitely need more fabric, V. Let's try this one, the pink tie-dye, I like that. You will get to a point where you can actually kind of cup this and use that as pressure to push this down and to help feed this through. Well, let's add some more purple, I think, in there, right? We haven't done that in a minute since the beginning.
which is what you should have so far. Looking good. Look at our basket so far. That is really looking good. Exactly how we want it. So now we're holding our basket really tight up against the side of our sewing machine just like that. And all the while still kind of pulling just a little tiny bit right here. Pulling towards you and pushing the basket away from you all at the same time. Good, wow, that is so pretty. I love those colors. All right, so this is what we have so far. My diameter up top here is approximately, oh, you could say about 10 and a half. I just think that looks I think that looks really good. Where you leave off right here is going to be where this starts to loop up. Now we're going to put a couple three layers probably here on top of this handle, but wherever you stop, you're going to lift up that strapping so that you don't sew that piece down. And then you want to clip right where you want to sew it back on your basket. So you're going to essentially sew here, lift it up, do not sew there just yet. And then you're going to start sewing down here. So you're going to lift up your needle, do not sew anymore, backstitch right there though. And then start here, backstitch, and then continue around. So however long you want your handle, you're going to just clip it where you want it. And it's really preference. I mean, I, I, I literally guess, I don't even know. And then, so you're gonna just clip it down there just so you can have an idea of what's going on. See, I just clipped it until I come up to the next loop. And then you're gonna wanna take a clip and clip that. See how I left that open there? Now you're going to want, of course, the same amount on both sides. And this is where you just have to fuss with it a little bit and figure it out. And I'm just, just so this isn't in our way right now, I'm going to just clip that down. So you just figure out if that is the same length, and I think it's not. we got to pull a little bit more. And then you can even do this. The space that you have there, you can actually measure it to see. I didn't on my first basket, but I eyeballed it. So this is about six inches in between where that handle lifts up. And if I go here, let me see this one, where I'm going to sew it back down in, it's about seven inches, so I do know that that's off. So what I wanna do Come in a little bit more there and maybe come in a little bit more there and see if that helps. Which it looks like it did actually, so. Okay, so about six inches in there and six inches in there. Now between the two handles this way, I mean, I'm just giving you these measurements, but honestly, I just eyeball it. You got about, 
oh, I'd say, I don't know, eight and a half there in between the two handles on the side. So let's see here. Yeah, about eight and a half. I mean, exactly. Wow. Okay, that one's pretty good. All right. So we left off right here. So we're going to re-put this back in the sewing machine. Well, we knotted that off right there. So actually, we don't have to do anything more right in this spot. But when we put it back in the sewing machine, we're going to skip that loop right here. And we're going to start sewing right where that clip is. Once you get the needle down into the basket again, you're going to take that clip out. We are going to backstitch here because remember, this is the other part of our handle. We're still doing this thing, we're still lifting that up. All right, when we get to where our clip is. a back stitch because remember that's the next beginning of our next handle so that handle essentially is the base and we're going to add two more layers on that so but it's looking good and then we did that one where we back stitched and lifted up and you can recheck it at this point too just to make sure everything is good now i think i might need to i pulled a little bit too much and i need to pull up there so so now I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna reinforce right here to make that stable. Now, when you get to the handle part, you are just going to follow along with the handle. So you're no longer really sewing on the basket, except when you go on the sides there. So you're just going to add those handles right with, and you'll see here, hopefully you can get in there and see real good. So right now I just have two pieces of rope that I'm dealing with. And then you'll go right into the side of the basket again. for round three on these handles. So this is what you should have so far. See, we're still connected. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and follow up with this last, because this is the end, I'm going to follow up with it right in here so that it just kind of blends right in here where it's going to bend. We're going to blend that right up and have that sewn right into there. So we need to cut it at an angle going inward. So that we're going to sew right up into that. And actually we can take a little piece of something, something if we want to cover that up. I'm just taking a little piece of something, no big deal. Just enough to hide it a little bit better. Out of that 100 feet of the cord that we had, we only have this much left. Just one little tiny ball that fits in my hand. That's it. Just add a bow and you're all set for Easter for this basket. This basket turned out so stinking cute. I can't wait to give it to my brand new baby granddaughter. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.